This video is going to show you, you how to use a fan that's typically controlled by one of these remotes and have it hooked up to a non-proprietary uh, switch. This one controls both the fan speed and the dimmer on it. So this is requires a switch. What they actually sell, in this case, hunter adapter. This is not. This is a directly wired one. So it's directly wired, and even. Uh, how to change out the light fixture so you get better light and how to even actually include a switch in here so that way you can change the fan polarity. So this is the theory of what we're going to change here. And here typically you have this controller right here beforehand, and it remotely talks to the fan controller, which is covering and it simulates this parts over here. These would also be, these parts would be covered as if it was a pull chain or something else, something else in there that's directly controlled on the device itself, or via the remote, or sometimes remotes are actually built in the wall. Like it might be easier to use the Hunter, uh, Hunter actually sells a fan remote, and it'd be easier to get by the integrated ones that we uh, don't have to hook up the lines or do this modification. So the theory is, is that this is the fan right here. The fan has two different coils, and they have a primary, and then you have what's called the starting, or you're called the, uh, the starting or secondary wiring, winding, depending on what's it called. You have a fan in the, a fan light in here that's sometimes not in there, but over here is what is what's. Uh, this is what we're going to end up replacing here. So this is going to be a switch that changes the polarity of the primary coil, which is going to rotate it one way or the other. So that's, uh, that's controlling that. And then you have what's here, which is the starting cap in here. What the starting cap does is that there has to be, you have a single phase, meaning the phase is that you have an AC current coming through in what's called three phase power. You have phases that are coming out at different, they're different, they're not at the same frequency, but they're coming out at different points of the wave. So they're at the different in the sine wave are at different periods, so it creates a field that's that's uh, out of sync, and that'll cause that those uh, EMF fields cause an induction and uh, induction difference. And then the motor, well, I probably screwed that up there, but it causes an EMF field change that wants to induce movement, so it'll go back to the EMF field. So we don't have that in what's called a single pole thing. So what we end up doing is we end up doing a capacitor here, and this capacitor shifts this this so that therefore these are out of phase and then it'll rotate with this being the controller so we're going to replace this right here and we're going to replace this right here and we're going to wire this up a little differently over here also the theory is like what you're going to replace it with is the controller over here this controller with this uh, is they have different things like the pull chains what they do the pull change actually changes the starting capacitor phase because you have different capacitance you're going to ship through uh, what this does over here, the modern stuff, is that it actually controls how much of the sine wave is output. So you have a full sine wave going through, and this would be, this is just a horrible drawing for a, uh, for just like the, the single gang uh, two controllers, one would be fan, one would be light. And all it does is that it turns off and on. Usually this is called leading on, this is called lagging on. Usually these are lagging on because once it crosses zero, it'll turn off. So it'll read it, it'll turn on. So it won't control different ways. That's how it controls the speed of the fan, or it controls the light intensity in there. So that's some, that's something of how these things are controlled. Um, and that's pretty much the theory of what's going on right here. Next section will be considerations, which are things that you need to consider when you're actually replacing this section right here. And like I said, it might be easier just to have the fan control in here, or it might be easier to do to do like, uh, say like Hunter has a, a wall unit that actually transmits to here. Then that might be something easier to do. All right, we're at the considerations phase and I actually have some props in here. Uh, so it's, if you look at the parts list, what I said is you have to have a couple of things. The first thing is any of these wires you're gonna be putting in here has to be able to take the current of the fan and of the, and of the light. Uh, something interesting here in the particular model that we have uh, the light, it can only take 16 watts, and that's because there was a limitation of the controller itself. 
I end up putting in a high, having to do another video, but I end up putting a light in here that's 20 watts uh, since I bypassed the controller and it's being controlled by the wall unit right there. It's uh, no issue. It's going to actually take a lot more power. So this that's something you got to realize though is that you have wiring for both the light and also the fan. And the fan actually is when it's stall current or if you actually are rotating the other way and you flip it in the opposite direction, that's actually going to be the most drawn current and that's going to be that could be an issue. If you look at if you look at that, that's very important to have the right type of the right gauge of wiring. Uh, second thing is that this is the uh, switch. If you're going to have if you're going to do switch and change the direction, this right here, if you wire it up in this configuration, it'll just change the polarity. So the hot will be on one side or hot will be on the other, the primary winding. What this does is this is going to allow uh, a lot of the current, uh, well, rotational change, either like clockwise or counterclockwise. Uh, this this wiring and this right here has to be has to be rated for it. In my system, two amps is what it is. I have this is 22 AWG is what I have, which meets the requirement for the transient stuff. Uh, that's something you're going to have to know what it is, what it is for your particular fan. So we have we talked about this being the required. Uh, required like AWG gauge for the current for both the fan and the light. We also talked about having this is a double pull double throw switch and this is just the one that's replacement one for a lot of pull chains. You see it on the side of a pull chain. I got created the way it's hidden on mine and what it is and under the, the switch right here is actually there's a, a micro switch in here and when you have a controller in there you actually put it on the back and this is how you do it. You press the button it actually has a microcontroller instead of this inside the controller that would switch this. So those are the two things right there. This right here just shows you the connection right here. This is using this off of a Hunter. It's uh, you can tell the colors of the parts. These are the standard parts. So you can see here's the the other primary coils, and then you have the secondary coils right here. And since we have our other consideration, which is the capacitor right here, and this one's really important. Uh, if you have a capacitor and it's too high of a value of microfarads. Well, first of all, it's actually got to be the voltage rated, so it's got to be rated for this. If you have it too high of microfarads, what it is, it's going to cause this thing, the phase shift to be greater. It'll cause us to spin more, which you think would be better, but these coils are designed to take a certain amount of current, and they can burn out on you, or worse, it could create a fire. That's the real danger right there. So this, thing, this uh, has to be at least the same or less. If it's less, it's going to be a slower rotating fan for max speed, but it's the same as what you're... Is what you're pulling out of here and if you just look at the biggest cap inside your controller that's typically what it's going to be i'm not going to say it is because that's doesn't it, it might not be the case in there or they have like a password and they also have they also have like a uh, damping a dampening resistor in there so it doesn't have the the kick on current that's as high but this has to be if you notice this thing going faster than what it is before you have too large of a capacitance in microfarads for this so this has to be rated right uh, Hunter didn't want to give me that information, so I ended up, there's a fancy way of doing this, and that's looking actually at a oscilloscope and doing the phase shift, or, and it's just that knowing that my phase shift was between these two, between the controller, and between this one is the same. You can do it by calculations, by looking at phasers, but that's, that's a little bit, uh, and there's some things called power factors that good electricians will know about. So those are the three things we talked about right there. We have, number one, having the gauge just be the right size. Number two, having the switch be rated correctly. Number three is a starting cap being there. And then this is probably the most important is that you have to be wired correctly. This is what's called right here. This is Romax right here. This is what is uh, 14.3. And 14.3, you see is, there's four things right here. Well, this is, doesn't count. So 14.2 would actually be, it'd be black and white. And 14.3 is, yeah, the red right here. 14 being the gauge, and the last number being how many current carrying, uh, or two, how many hots and how many returns are on there. This one's safety right here. Uh, so you need, for this particular one, you're going to need at least one per each thing you're controlling. So a motor is going to need one hot. Uh, the fans, so the fan's going to need one hot, and it really depends on how it's wired in your system. Typically, this is black is primary, red is secondary. And then... The neutral is going to be returned, so you have a neutral that's common to them. But this has to be wired from the wall to here correctly, otherwise it's not going to work. So those are the considerations you have to take in when you're doing this. So this is going to be the directional switch where I put it inside the one. 
Uh, here's a directional switch I had. What this do is it's going to change it from uh, forward and backwards or clockwise, counterclockwise on the fan. And what it does is it switches direction of the primary uh, coil. Uh, this one I burnt up right here, but you can see, and I'll throw up a diagram. What the switch does, this is the no position, this is one direction, this is the other direction. Essentially what you're doing is you're taking the source and you're flipping it in one side or the other side of the primary coil, coil right here. I chose 22 AWG because it'll fit inside the, the hole right here is where I'm going to access it on this one. And the other reason is that it meets the requirements for constant current, which the fan, uh, the fan should be doing under 2 amps at most. And that's under stall speed, meaning at zero speed max. Uh, so this, this right here, for signals, it's rated high enough for constant current it is too, but it's going to produce heat. But if your fan's running, it shouldn't be running at that max. This is the one I actually finished right here. And I did it in such a way that uh, it's wrapped up. I, I have splicing tape on top of the heat shrink, so everything's isolated from each other. I even add this to the ground, ground the switch itself. Uh, I'm going to install it. I'm going to put it in right here. And it's going to go down to, this is the bottom, this is the, this particular model. Usually these are on the side of uh, the chain pulls, and those are a lot easier to get to. The other alternative is I have to get in here. Here's where the controller is, where I'm going to wire into. Uh, another thing is you could run it up through here to the side, which is a lot of them are visible. Uh, this one, we're going to keep it hidden, so that's where we're going to run it through here. So I'm going to take off this top, and what I have to do for this is I have to remove these four bolts right here, remove this fifth bolt, this pulls up, and then this holding repeat slides. That should remove this whole thing, and you'll see it in a little bit. Uh, actually, let me see if I could do this live. Oh, something else is when you're putting this in here, because I'm using a modified, uh, I'm using this, which is modified, or I'm going to modify the base plate right here. You may have to install this because it's so big. Through this, there's a secondary base plate, which is way too small to fit through. Or you could cut it without actually affecting the, uh, without affecting it at all. But you want to cut it beforehand. Otherwise, you have to put it in, put the other plate on, and put this in. But since I know this fits through here, uh, this will, I can just put them on later. I'm going to try to get the wire through. And this might be way too hard to do, two handed. So I try to get it through, and what I don't want it to do is I don't want it to come out where the coils are. Because essentially, this is it's going to meet up with the other wires. That are, these are the light wires coming through. And you got the other wires going to the, the primary and secondary coil of the van itself. Uh, let me see. I'm going to take it off. So pulling off the top on this right here, you have four screws that are here. These are the ones that go into this metal piece right here. These other four screws you can leave in. So you pull those off. There's a fifth screw right here. It's got a wider flange around it. You pull it off. Uh, then what you do is you have this metal retaining piece that keeps it in place. And what I did is I took a, what I just took is an Allen wrench and I hit it with a, uh, or I tapped it with a rubber mallet until it came out the side through here. It popped out here and then I'm ready to pull this thing off. You have to remember the orientation of this, the ground wire. There's a cutout for this right here for the ground wire. So you pull that off and once you have that, you should be able to pull off the top and now you have access to the controller on the inside. So what you didn't see me do is I ran, this is going to be the polarity switch. That changes the which one is the hot, which one's the neutral wild that hooks up to the primary coil. And so this one I ran through here because it's going to be accessible. You take off the, uh, the glass and then you can run the switch between if you want it forward, or basically wind up or wind down. Here's what it looks like on the other end. This is the top that I took off right here. And this is why they say that this controller is unaccessible in their model, just because it's a pain to get to. Uh, so what I did is I have a donor I have a donor connector that I'm going to use, and it's, what it's going to do is this, I'm going to hook up wiring from here, here's the, uh, the coils right here, from the switch that will change the prairie direction, and what I do is I have to line it up so that way, see right here, these are the uh, primary and secondary winding coils, I have to wire it up, that's the diagram there that you'll see for that. And this is the light right here too, so 
I'm going to wire this sack up. It'll be to the diagram. Also, I'm going to add this right here. I added this to the ground. I attach it to here. Just for a little more safe is that the little metal piece on the switch is grounded at least. All right. All right, so I have it assembled. Uh, and I have it connected per the diagram. What I did is I kept this controller on there just in case I want to bypass it and uh, put the original configuration. I used uh, one of these that was a spare. And you can see it on the bottom. It's passed through the center. That's what that little thing is right there. And if you, like I said earlier, if you have to put a, um, you have to use the, the system. This is too big for what comes with it. I'm, I'm actually modifying it. I cut a hole in it. So if you do, you have to put those on right now, which, or have it hang off, and it might be easier just to cut a hole in it.